When we think of the Salvation Army, the first thing that comes to mind is the bell and the bucket. But the Salvation Army is much deeper than, and richer than the bucket. A lot of things that no one sees that we do is behind our retail store. We are known for a thrift store. Uh, but what happens in our donation center is all of the things that have to happen to make our store look like it does. And that is sorting, pricing, tagging, all of the donations that our community so generously gives to us. Lisa, if someone were to volunteer for the Salvation Army, what would that look like? What role would they take? What do you have available for someone to come in and use, give their time to help out? We have so many different opportunities. So it's just not in our thrift store or here in our sorting area, which is always uh, need extra hands here. Uh, but we also can use administrative support to answer our phones and give out resource information for clients that come into our office. We also have a commercial kitchen that we are pr just getting ready to start doing community feedings. Uh, we are gonna need volunteers to help prepare that food and serve that food to the community. Anybody we can use, anybody that has time to give to us, and we will find a spot. It's for not just kitchen. about ringing a bell. It is not just about ringing the bell. We need volunteers year round. Uh, so this is the time we're known for, but we need you in July too. So Elise, you talk about the feeding aspects of Salvation Army, um, and you talked a little bit earlier about doing some feeding during a natural, natural disaster over in Valdosta. Um, uh, and you mentioned an incredible story. Will you tell us a little bit about this, the, the time that you were able to, to really meet somebody's need right there on their front porch? Absolutely. Um, we were deployed to Valdosta after Hurricane Idalia. Um, we were doing feedings um, and I was on my way to a location I was supposed to be going and um, was led to make a detour and came up on a lady sitting on her front porch with her two grandchildren stopped and um, gave them food. Um, the story is that she had just lost a grandchild um, from a violent crime. Um, the, the child was 14 years old. Um, so we prayed with her and um, gave them food. And they were so grateful and surprised because that's not where I was supposed to be, but that's where I was led to go. Um, a couple months later, I had to be back in Valdosta and I remembered where they lived, circled back around, just checked on them, see if there was anything I could do, um, and gave them resources um, for the Angel Tree program in Valdosta so they could get their children Christmas. That's exciting, that's great. We've learned today that one of your missions is breaking intergenerational poverty. What does that look like and what's next for the Salvation Army? One of our main programs that we have as the Salvation Army is the Pathway of Hope program, and that is a case managed program by a case manager here at the Salvation Army. We currently have 10 families in the program, and it is a program that teaches life skills to move from not being self-sustaining to self-sustaining, and that can be everything from education to budgeting to uh, learning how to write a resume, do an interview, and um, we're gonna be working on doing culinary training classes for these families. And the goal is to not just change the parents outlook and help them move from not being self-sustaining to being self-sustaining, but to also teach those skills to their children so it changes the next generation.